Hello everyone. I am Priyam Bata. I am a consultant neurosurgeon and spine surgeon and I work at Manipal Hospital Whitefield. Brain tumor is a mass or growth of abnormal cells within the brain or in structures very close to our brain. The brain tumor can be of various types. One can be a primary brain tumor where the tumor essentially originates within the brain and then it may spread to other parts of the brain or it can be a secondary brain tumor which starts in other parts of the body and then spreads to the brain otherwise called as metastatic brain tumors tumors can be benign meaning non cancerous or they can be malignant or cancerous tumors can arise within the substance of the brain or they can arise in the layers which are covering the brain or sometimes even from the inner aspect of the skull and they can grow inside the brain tissue tumors begin whenever uh, there are mutations or dna are errors which occur in a cell so these mutations they cause the cells to grow and develop very rapidly at such a high pace and these cells mutated cells they do not die and they continue to proliferate unlike that of a healthy cells the exact cause of a brain tumor is not known but there are some risk factors such as ionizing radiations and some tumors are familial that is they run in families sometimes increasing age can have caused an increased incidence of brain tumors but tumors are also seen in children and in the pediatric population Symptoms of a brain tumor would depend on few important characteristics. What is the size of the brain tumor? Where the tumor is located and how rapidly it is growing. Based upon these characteristics, a tumor can present in various ways. Perhaps the most common symptom of a brain tumor would be headache. Headache is a fairly common symptom and lot of patients do experience headache at least once in their lifetime. But not all headaches are suggestive of a brain tumor. There are very typical characteristics sometimes headaches which are very severe and occur more in the morning headaches which are associated with vomiting headaches which are precipitated by exercise by coughing sneezing and these are very typical characteristics of a headache associated with a tumor but one needs to know that this typical presentation may not always be there some patients can also experience vomiting especially a vomiting which is projectile and not associated with nausea typical symptom of a brain tumor which occurs in some patients would be a seizure a seizure otherwise called as a fit in layman's terms is normally uh, characterized by uh, jerky movements of the body so this is also a very typical symptom of a tumor if it occurs some other symptoms can be blurring of vision some patients can present with speech disturbances like difficulty in comprehension understanding difficulty in speaking in forming words some of them can present with weakness in the body weakness of an arm or leg difficulty in walking lack of balance lack of coordination sometimes they can present in a very confused state and sometimes they can also present with drowsiness and loss of consciousness some tumors depending upon where they arise they can also cause various types of nerve involvement for example some patients can have disturbances of hearing if the nerve, if the tumor arises in a nerve which is responsible for the hearing some can present with a uh, problem such as facial paralysis which can manifest as deviation of the mouth towards one side difficulty in closure of the eyes all this exactly depends on where the tumor is growing and which nerve it is involving The diagnosis of a brain tumor begins with a complete neurological examination. The detailed neurological examination would include testing a patient for uh, his balance, uh, coordination, the way he walks, reflexes will be tested, vision, and essentially it would involve a complete neuro checkup. So once the doctor suspects that this patient may be having a brain tumor, then further uh, 
diagnostic tests such as scans may be done. One of the most essential uh, diagnostic tools which is involved in diagnosing a patient with brain tumor would be the MRI brain scan. A contrast MRI brain scan is usually recommended and this involves basically taking pictures of the brain in different sections both pre and post contrast. Some of the other additional modalities, diagnostic modalities would include a CT scan, sometimes uh, angiographies which are diagnostic tests which are done to study the blood vessels in the brain, they can also be recommended. The treatment of a brain tumor would essentially depend upon the size of the tumor, the location of the tumor, the rate of growth and whether it's benign or malignant. Now based on the MRI scan, the neurosurgeon can get a fair picture of whether a tumor is benign or malignant, but the final diagnosis would essentially rest upon the biopsy of the tumor, which would be done through a surgery. The treatment commonly involves one or more of the following modalities, which is surgery, radiotherapy and sometimes chemotherapy. Surgery essentially would be the first step for most of the brain tumors. The surgery may involve taking a small sample of the tumor tissue referred to as a biopsy or sometimes it may include removing the entire tumor tissue or at least doing a debulking or a good decompression of the tumor tissue. The goal of the surgery is to remove as much of the brain tumor as possible. Depending upon size of the tumor and the relation of the tumor with the surrounding normal tissue, either tumor can be completely removed or the maximum po uh, portion of the tumor which is accessible for a safe removal is removed. In some cases, the tumors are very easy to separate from the normal brain tissue because there is a good plane of cleavage between the tumor and between the normal brain and it becomes easier to remove the tumor completely. But in some cases, such a plane of cleavage may not be available and it may be invading the normal brain tissue, in which case the surgeon, based upon the clinical judgment, would decide to decompress the tumor as much as possible. Even partial decompression of the tumor or removal of the maximum amount of tumor would relieve the patients of a lot of symptoms like headache, vomiting, etc. After the surgery, the sample of the tissues which have been removed, it is sent for a histopathological analysis, otherwise known as a biopsy. The biopsy would essentially tell us about the nature of the tumor and whether the tumor is benign or it's malignant. If the tumor is benign, then the surgery is essentially the only treatment which the patient would need and he or she would need to be on further follow-ups. But if the tumor is reported as malignant, then further treatment in the form of radiotherapy and chemotherapy may be required. Brain tumors are the most common solid cancers in childhood and they are one of the second leading causes of deaths due to cancer in children, especially those less than 15 years. Tumors, pediatric uh, brain tumors, essentially present in more or less the same way as they do in adults. Children can present with headache, vomiting, lethargy, irritability, reduced appetite, lack of growth, weakness in the limbs, etc. In very small children, especially in those less than one year or two years, the size of the head can also start increasing. This is because of the accumulation of water inside the brain called as hydrocephalus, which can at times occur in the presence of a brain tumor. The cause of pediatric brain tumors is essentially unknown, but two important risk factors are ionizing radiation and sometimes genetic syndromes. The treatment in pediatric brain tumors is along the same principles. First, a surgery is done and or and a biopsy is sent and based upon the final report of the biopsy, further treatment may be indicated. Brain tumors are relatively a rare occurrence in adults as compared to all other malignancies. The overall incidence is reported to be about 2% of all malignancies in adults. The incidence of brain tumors it generally increases after the age of 30 years and it starts to fall after the age of 75 years. 
Some tumors are more common in the female population such as meningiomas. The incidence of brain tumors in children are the in children the brain tumors are the most common solid neoplasms and the most common brain tumor in childhood will be a medulloblastoma. Unfortunately, brain tumors cannot be prevented, but early diagnosis and treatment can go a long way in better management of these tumors. The outcome from the management of a brain tumor would depend on various factors, whether the brain tumor is benign or malignant, at what stage was it diagnosed, the size of the brain tumor, and whether it's already damaged the brain tissue. Whether a tumor is benign or malignant, the tumor would start pressing upon the normal brain and it can cause an increased brain swelling. So if we diagnose a tumor early, then there's a good possibility of being able to remove the tumor in the early stage. The most malignant brain tumor in an adult is a glioblastoma multiforme, which even with the best of treatment, including all three modalities such as surgery, radiotherapy and chemotherapy, the life expectancy is very short. On the other hand, tumors which are benign and which are located in good accessible areas of the brain, if they are removed, the outcome can certainly be better.